Nine minutes past nine o'clock, the 30th day of September 2023. Welcome aboard the Big Set on Western Uganda's biggest radio station, 91.2. Cruise FM, good music, great friends. Good morning. My name is Wesi Gevanyaji. We are on air and online on www.cruisefm.com forward slash stream. And on Cruise TV is where you can be able to watch everything that is happening in studio right here on Plot 12 Mutilane. Boma Hill, uh, right in the um, land of milk and honey. Mbara City is where we are. But I want to say shout outs to every person that is streaming and is already tuned in from all the countries across the world if you're in london if you're in washington dc if you're in johannesburg south africa if you're in cairo egypt if you're in nairobi kenya Dar es Salaam, tanzania and all these places and every particular saturday morning 9 a.m to 11 yours is to make a dead with us listening to everything that we have to discuss on the big set do a bit politics, economics, sociology, and everything that affects all of us. But in a very special way, knowing that we're closing up the month, I want to congratulate the parents that were able to take their children to school about uh, two weeks ago. And uh, for those that are salarianas, uh, you've been able to get that uh, few shillings within your pockets. Please make sure that you use it in the best way that you can so that you can be able to grow yourself but also contribute to the national economy my name is Wes Gibanyaj once again let me give you a rewind of the week before we get into our topic of discussion now you know uh issues hey inflation at least every person should be able to know what inflation is now headline inflation is on an all-time high where the food commodities have increased spiked from 0.6 percent in august to 0.7 percent in august uh, now food items like matoke vegetables fruits they have uh, slightly increased in prices this is a report that we got from the uganda national bureau of statistics giving us this information knowing that the weather has changed a little bit it's now more rainy we're receiving some kind of rains we expect that the milk will a bit uh, go deep we shall have the prices a lot about and uh, other food commodities after you know the seasons are getting better with the rains but the farmers the message is simple go and sow your seeds so that in the next season you can be able to harvest very greatly and grow the economy and we have food security now uganda this was a news that was captivating for the entire east african region uganda welcomed a very successful promoter B to host the African Cup of Nations come 2027 in concert with uh, Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda who will host the opening match and who will host the, fin the finale. That is a moment that we shall be waiting for uh, come 2027. Who will be president by then? Perhaps uh, General Museven will still be president after that 2026 general election. We look out for that, but congratulations to the people of East Africa for this bid and uh, for the Ugandan people especially. Now it's the time to grow our sports facilities so that they become accredited by CAF and the tourism economy will be able to grow and every Ugandan will have a better shilling in their pockets. Now, President Museveni uh, uh, said that he had directed the Minister of Finance to put out a statutory instrument on interest that is paid to money lenders now if i told you a money shark out there you've been charging about 30 percent 20 percent of interest per month the president is disturbed a couple of people that are committing suicide that have lost all the assets to money lenders i think the outcry now has reached the ears of the president he advises that uh, the minister of finance should be able to come up with an instrument a statutory instrument putting a cap on the interest that is charged by money lenders we know this is not news in parliament where members of parliament have to hide from money lenders because of uh, the money that is owed to these individuals we shall be looking out for that now elias Lukwago chairs first neck meeting where he urged the team to remain strong and focused in order to regain public trust we all know what is happening within the forum for democratic change uh, we have two factions, one headed by engineer Patrick Amuriata at Najana Nkombi, and another now headed by the Lord Mayor Elias Rukwago, uh, the Katonga fraction. We know that each of the fractions uh, believes they are credible and they are legitimate to lead the FDC. We're watching out for how far it can go, and we wish them good luck as they prepare for the 2026 general election. Now, President Museven 
tasked uh, the Prime Minister, uh, Honorable Robin Anabanja, and the Vice President, Jessica Lupo, Her Excellency, to explain the huge UN delegation of, uh, to MPs at State House during the caucus meeting. This week, we saw the NRM caucus meeting at State House in, uh, in Tebe, where they were able to have an engagement with the Excellency, the President. This matter came up. But to what I know, uh, the Right Honourable Prime Minister only went with five people to the United Nations. The same with the Vice President. So the list that came out of about 71 people is a matter of investigation. Now, Uganda Lands Commission Chairperson Professor Nyeko Penmogi calls for a new amendment of the Constitution to enable government to assume ownership of land across the country. Now, you know for sure that this has not been for starters. It has come, we remember, from way back in 2017. And all these reforms in our land law has uh, been on, you know, within the corridors of power. How better can we manage the resource that we have that every person badly needs for production? That's land. It will be a topic of discussion this morning. I'll put it on our social media platforms. That's on X, Cruise FM. You'll be able to give us feedback on what you think about land ownership only belonging to government, as suggested by the Uganda Land Commission Chairperson, Professor Nyeko. And Facebook, the question is right there on how you think this should be managed. Should land belong to the state uh, and the state manages it and uses the resources according to the benefit of the entire public? This is a matter that you and I are going to be talking about this morning. But don't forget that the Constitutional Court in Kampala quashed the Speaker, the Right Honorable Anita Mongis, uh, decision to remove Mitiana Member of Parliament, area, uh, Francis Zaki, as a Commissioner of Parliament. That was a victory for Honorable Zaki there from the Constitutional Court ruling. And uh, we're getting into a topic of discussion. With me in studio is uh, Mr. Peter Mpaka. He belongs to the National Unity Platform. Asim Ebanjizi, member of the National Resistance Movement and MK Project there. And uh, Council Bwenje Dels did it, who is a lawyer and now a regular on the big set. Let me start with Council Bwenje. Good morning and welcome to the big set. I'm fine. I'm fine. How's your morning? I want to, to say hello to my fellow members of the panel. And I want to, I think, start by saying that uh, this week has been... Uh, has been uh, eventful, and I want to to commence by thanking two two pa two two patriotic gentlemen who really have Uganda at heart, and one of them is uh, Council Mare Mavitizi, because what he did by petitioning the CAF president to revoke the 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 hosting rights of Uganda. Is a patriotic act. But Council Wendy, you guys are being obnoxious. You the guys are being act. obnoxious. They, they, <laughs> there's it's a, it's absolutely there's no ridiculous obnoxiousness here. It is for you it is to actually, think it is actually something consciousness. that benefits the entire country see, and the region of see, East Africa. See, it is we actually shall stand against you, Council Wendy. Yes, Wednesday. you have your right, and I also have my right. Actually, it is not ob obnoxiousness. Neither is it madness. It is consciousness. We are conscious of, of who we are. You see, mm. uh, Let, let's allow him. Let's uh, allow him. Am I protected? Yes. If you saw bloodshed, corruption, fraud, sectarianism, military madness, then you do not reap foreign exchange arising from sports tourism. So you have no moral authority at all. If you kill your own people, so who is going to attend those matches? Nobody. So, so uh, Uganda and, has and, to and, earn and that right. Isn't uh, Mabide Mabide and actually, a busybody who and, literally has no locus actually, on uh, any no, matter? No, 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 no. Uh, He's a person who, who has a cause of action, a cause of action and locus standi mm. in whatever he asserts. See, uh, actually, we are lodging an investigation in how Uganda got th this bid, this, this, uh, hosting right because as you remember south africa did in the 2014 world cup i think it it did so with some corruption scandals so we are trying to 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 investigate if the 
if uh, the honorable magogo uh, and the uh, president uh, did, did, did not send some bread you and your colleagues are yes. violating article 50 article 3 of to the constitution think, provides no, for, for defense of the constitution they, well so how uh, far will so, you go so <laughs> mo, uh, so uh um uh yes uh, what uh, and then uh, the other gentleman whom i have uh high respect for is honorable zake francis mm. what, what he did by actually asserting his rights in the constitutional court FM. Great music. Great music. Great friends. Great friends. <laughs> On Western Uganda's biggest radio station, 91.2 Cruise FM. Great music. Great friends. 17 minutes to the top of the hour. My name is Wes Givanyaji. Good morning. And for every other person that is catching the show, I want to say thank you so much. We appreciate you. You're the reason we keep doing this every Saturday. Now, there is a gentleman who is catching the show. Cabs who is streaming in from Mitoma. Uh, thank you, sir, for taking time to listen to the big seat. Councilor Simwe is here. Uh, Councilor Bwende Delfs, Dedeta Simwe, and you see Mr. Peter Mpaka. We are talking about the proposal by the chairperson of uh, the Uganda Land Commission on the state taking ownership of all lands. You know, this will improve our national economy in the way because now there are so many projects that government would wish to put on land. But because land belongs to individuals who must seek compensation in high volumes of money, that government sometimes is not able to provide. Now, we're having a conversation of whether you think this proposal by the chairperson of the Uganda Lands Commission is the right move. Asimu. When you hear of the Chairperson Lands Commission suggesting that, you know what, I think the problem that I have witnessed as the chairperson, or as the custodian of government land, is because land is not in the hands of government. And he moves to say we should reverse this and we have government carry out the projects that it wishes on land without any disturbance from individuals. And you know, there are people in this country who only benefit on land, who can allow this government to get away with so many things, including human rights violations, corruption, and all inefficiencies, but will not allow them to go to get away with land issues. We know the murders, the killings that have happened because of the issues on land. Don't you think this is a very sensitive topic that the chairperson, Professor Nyeko, should just forget and allow peace and tranquility to continue as far as management of land is concerned in this country. Thank you once again, Vanyaji. Allow me to say hello to my OG, my sister, a family friend. She's listening in right now. Charity Chubajukamhanda. She has political aspirations and ambitions of contesting for MP ship Mbaraste. Vanyaji, first forward. On that topic, honestly speaking, we have four land tenures in Uganda. We have the Mairo land that I know is part of the reasons as to why we are having this debate. The freehold, the customary, and finally the freehold. And these four tenure systems to me are working properly. They are very okay. Government itself, Banyaji, 
before they start pointing fingers at us or Uganda or other people that have undeveloped land, government has failed to develop land that it has in its possession. Let's look here in Imbara. Go to Kachika, Charwa, Uganda, that site where they wanted to, to put the, the garbage dumping site. Several of government land right now is in the hands of individuals. And here they are claiming Ugandans have failed to develop their own land. It's better we possess everything. Why can't government first, by example, develop all land that belongs to government? Two, Banyaji, the problem here is actually addressing the issue of corruption and embezzlement. Council Deus touched on it. Government projects have never been hindered by Ugandans, not complying or wanting them. Case in point, our road for going to my home district from Kashenyi to Mitoma, no one was ever compensated. But the fact that civic education was carried out prior to the project, people even gave out more chunks of land willingly. That's the reason as to why that stretch from Kashenyi to Mitoma is among the best designed road projects that we have in Uganda. When you look at the Usmaid road projects countrywide, Usmaid projects, they never compensate. The project affected people because... World Bank claims you're the beneficiaries. We can't help you to put up a structure that will link you. But that's producer. a violation of uh, no, listen, the constitution. It's not a violation because they move along the stretch or people sign and they are like, it's fine. Look at the roads that we have in Imbara City. Look at that market. We benefit. So the issue is addressing corruption. When you look at Entebbe Express Highway, it's one of the most, uh, it's actually the most expensive road project globally because of the money that was spent on compensation. And the truth of the matter is, there are guys in government MDAs that operate like a cater, the so called mafias. When they know <coughs> that 10 years from now a new project is going to come up, they pick the coordinates of where the project is going to pass. They start acquiring those chunks of land at a cheaper cost from the original land owners. When the project comes on board, they demand for her a lot of money. Then they connive with the government valuers. They inflate the figures. And you find government is paying her a lot of money. in So they operate as a cartel. The problem here is just corruption. The problem here, it's just embezzlement. The problem here, it's just lack of integrity in our government institutions. And our systems have failed. Banyaji, but me, when, the opposition, when, the, when the opposition calls for an overhaul of the system, ba Banyaji, you say, no, 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 no we must re Banyaji, remain you see, with the same there man. There is no guarantee that when these guys come He's into power, to from they, will from no, they will change the system. Look at the chaos that is currently happening in their own parties. They are not worth it. And that's why Ugandans are hesitant to entrust them with the power. They are saying better the devil that you know than the one the, the, than an that, angel that you, that, you that you don't know. Mm. So, Mibanyaji, the whole concept Obote by used, Professor... Obote in 1980 uh, used to say that those same statements you're so, saying. Obote uh, 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 Nani, Banyaji, <laughs> yes. the whole concept on paper if our systems were okay, clear, absolutely clean, I would buy into it. When you make references to Tanzania, my brother in TZ, their systems are efficient. There is a time when I drove from Masaka via that border, Mutukula, Mutukula mm. to Lake Victoria, the crossing point via a ferry to Mwanza. I didn't see any pothole. The traffic officers are always on the road. They don't ask for Kint Kidogo. Even when you're in Rome, they stop you and tell you, don't do A, B, C, D. In TZ, we expect you to do this and that. The time I spent in Mwanza, I didn't see any piece of litter or garbage on the street. When it comes to their border, border riders, they park at designated border stages. If it's traffic lights, unlike here in Uganda, where we have traffic policemen overriding the traffic lights, 
everyone will stop whether it's a, mo- a border guy or someone on foot they will respect them so me i think we shall make that transition after cleaning our systems and everything is okay but this one that is being proposed Banyaji, ah man i'm not ready to lose my land to unscrupulous mafias in the system <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, yeah, yeah. government should first <laughs> develop their own land that they have. Yes. Each and every district that you go to, yes, government, government has, has land. land there that is undeveloped. So where do they get the moral authority to start lecturing in, us? In, in fact, the Speaker of Rwambara Mwesu Gwajotham King says that has government used its land? All land that was made to government was divided into those that are in power. Look at Inshera, look at Sanga. And all this land, let's we can also look at how much land government has had in different places and how uh, utilized is it. Because the chairperson may propose something that it, you know they cannot even deal with whatever they have at their disposal without any disturbance from the people of Uganda. How much are they utilizing that land, first of all? So, as you're saying, and thank uh, the chairperson, uh, the speaker of Ruampara, it's the bitter truth. Right now, we know some government land that has been parceled out to individuals. Right now, we know, go to Nakasero. Shimon was demolished and land given to a particular investor in courts up to now. Two decades later, nothing has ever mm. been done on that land. You reach to an extent of demolishing a public school in the name of investment. Nothing happens. So, let government lead by example. Government come here in Imbara, utilize all the land you have here, you, uh, you exhaust it, you go to all these districts, Guru, Arua, Kampara, wherever, even the Mairo land that is giving them sleepless nights. That land can easily be gotten and people pay little money. The other day I saw the Katikiro, Peter Maiga, in addressing Buganda Ruchiko and telling them, when you go back, encourage our people who don't have the capacity to do productive work on the, their big chunks of land they have, to raise it out. But government is saying, if at all you cannot utilize the idle land that you have, we shall tax it. How about then that proposal that would perhaps now would wake up Ugandans that are not being as productive on land? Why don't they start by taxing themselves first? Government itself. Because it's not say, reading by example, Banyaji. The genesis of all this if government had fully exhausted all government lands, they are selling our ranches. Go to narrow here. Don't go far. Here in Imbarara. Go to these ranches. I don't want to mention names here. These government lands are being parceled out so that we for faint ownership of our land. And it's actually even in contravention of Article 26. Ugandans have a right to own property individually or in, associa- in association mm. with others. And even Rand is among that so said. So, will they make Vanyaji? Right now, Uganda, we have but, but, a But assume, mm. Vanyaji, mm. if, if there is a location of a piece of land that is strategic to governments, we are not saying government will now be found guilty of not use, utilizing government land in Karamoja, where it's not a strategic location, and yet... Here at Kamkuzi, there is a strategic piece of land that government finds very useful for service delivery. Then you cannot say, why haven't you used the uh, land in Kariega in, in Karamoja for you to come and uh, want to coerce someone to give up that land to government? Uh, Banyaji, so now, we're talking about those are double land. standards. Mm. When you say that, not all idle land in Uganda is in prime locations. Actually, most of the land in private hands in prime locations is fully developed. And some yeah, of That is it, not true. Yeah, most of it, a good percentage of it. Mm-hmm. Let's land. go, let's let's go to High Street. How many idle plots are there? You're into real estate management business. You have mm. a farm that does deals in that. On prime streets in Imbar, how many chunks of la- plots are, are, are vacant? Actually, when you move around some of these big cities... You will find that the prime pieces of land that are idle and undeveloped or under use are the ones in the hands of government. So, Vanyaji, let's not fall for this trap. Me, I will not accept mm. Ugandans to be duped. I'm NRIM. 
but being nrm does not mean that Aye. i should lose my objectivity on this we shall unite with all ugandans we shall carry out civic education our four and ten war systems are still working they have not failed okay thank what you. is failing us as ugandans is corruption embezzlement inefficiencies in these systems people conniving with the government values they over because that's the concern of his excellence not knowing that the problem of these huge money is being lost in compensation not actually all the money goes to the actual okay, beneficiary thank, thank you asim teacher and simile godwin who is in london mm. says even having cows goats and chicken in your land you will pay tax for grazing your cows and slaughtering a cow for a friend you have to pay tax and seek authority uh, and uh, you're listening again all the way from london and he's saying don't forget to tell the people that uh, he's the mayor to be the kachevez he has failed Absolutely. we say uh, we stop up for a break uh, thank you uh teacher godwin and similar there in london for catching the show we're stopping for a break when we link up in the second hour it will be the telephone calls and your feedback on our social media platforms. Absolutely. Good morning. It's tough. It's bold. It's real politics. The Big Seat on 91.2. Cruise FM. Great music. Great music. Great friends. Great friends.
Great music. Great music. Great friends. Great friends. We are back. It's three minutes past ten o'clock on Western Uganda's biggest radio station, 91.2 Cruise FM. Great music. Great friends. My name is Wesi Givanyaji. We are right here on Plot 12 Mutilane. Boma Hill, Ambara City is where we basing to spread the conversation all over the world. So go on our social media uh, platforms. That's uh, on X912 Cruise FM where you can find us. If I told you you're still in the old, that's Twitter. And 91.2 Cruise FM on Facebook. Now, for those that want to catch whatever is happening here, and uh, you see Banjizi and the Council of Wenge and Peter and Parker and me and myself. Go to Cruz TV on TikTok and YouTube. We are right there. Now, on uh, Cruz TV, I can see the conversation is on. Karim Kakore in Ivanda. Uh, you're listening in from uh, Vihanga Barracks. Uh, uh, Fredo Wa United, Comprehensive Mbara College. Um, Gabi Mahad, come, come, uh, you're, listening, you're watching from Mutungo in Kampala and enjoying the show. Nicholas Nwamanya uh, at Kakoba BSU, you're streaming live. Tumsime Innocent, uh, you're watching from Makere University, you're saying thank you for the program. Jordan Morata, you're watching. Nomwe Sigwa, Sophia, you're watching from Uganda University. And uh, Nwaman and Nebat, you're in Kazo. And uh, let me see, Ka- Kawazo. Amizo, you're also in Kakova Nyakizi here. Let me end with uh, Michael Turia Singura, who is uh, watching all the way from uh, Fort Porto. Government wants to buy, uh, should buy its own land instead of other people's land. I want to thank you so much for those that are catching the show on Cruise TV. Please keep up there up to 11 o'clock when we close out. And uh, right now, you can uh, take a chance and call in on 752-912-912 and 780-912-910. Those are the two numbers that you can be able to call in. And we get to hear your opinion on whether land should go in the land of, in the hands of government for proper utilization. On Facebook, uh, you see the messages are quite good. Robert Babi, how you in Dubai? And you're saying, what's wrong with people? They have taken all oh, well. Amot, Alfred, you're saying good morning, everyone. Me, I think government is targeting our land because they have been stealing it in secret. Now they are here. You're listening again from Kashenyi at Mitoma Junction. Musingu Zonosmas, you're saying, I think all people in the three arms of government of Uganda do not authenticate before tabling bills and amendment before parliament. This is something that is meant to uh, let down the common person financially. And because if this amendment is passed, there's a big chance that there will be regulations set out by government on how to use the land. And uh, thank you, sir. Nwamanya Edson, you're saying that Wanainchi won't benefit from this program because big government officials will be the one to utilize the land. This time around, you're catching it from Kakoa BSU. Ivan Palvo, you're saying, I shall agree with that idea. There is too much of income inequalities in the country. I think if government can control those inequalities, too much land is underutilized while poor are suffering. I'll come back with Bamwine Lawrence. But for now, to the lifeline of the show, the telephone calls on 752-912-912 and 780-912-910. If you're a land economist out there, please contribute to the show. If at all you're a landowner, you're into the district land boards and all these institutions that are mandated to manage the resources of land, you can call us or send us a text or message on our Facebook page on 91.2 Cruise FM and on Twitter at 912 Cruise FM. The Big Seed, good morning. Good morning, how are you? I am fantastic. Turn down the volume of your radio so that we don't get feedback here. Uh, so this is Tumaini from Isinjiro. Yes, Tumaini in Isinjiro. Sorry. On 752-912-912 and 780-912-910. Let's get to hear from you. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Uh, good morning to you. I'm fantastic. How are you doing this morning? Uh, I'm fantastic. Mm. This is my third friend, Brunash Tundi Singhilo. Yes, please. Uh, I think... This is the secret way how the government wants to conquer people's lives. Mm. Because when you say that the, the land should be in the government's hand, that will not work. Good morning. 
All right, thank you so much for catching the show. On 752-912-912 and 780-912-910. Those are the two numbers that you can use to call us here and we get to hear from you. The Big Set. Hello? Cruz FM, good morning. Good morning to you. Yes, how are you? What's your name and where are you calling us from? You're talking to Ivan. Yes, Ivan, speak up. Ivan was left from Barada here. Yeah, you're still in bed. I am not in bed. Okay, let's get to hear from you on our topic of discussion. First, I appreciate the program. All right. But to the best of my knowledge, you know, I come from uh, Bukeda district. Mm. Where the speaker happens to come from. Mm. Before we talk about the land issues to be given to government, I think uh, government has got a motive in order to rob the, the public. Because if you look at like Fukupedia district, mm. we had land which was meant for the sub-county, but this is the land which was sold to one individual to put in her own personal enterprises. And the land of the sub-county was transferred into some swamp. So, so you in your opinion, it's the uh, corruption that will be the challenge here? The corruption is too much and uh, get the land to be owned by people. All right. Thank you for your contribution, sir, Ivan. The big seat. Hello. Yes, good morning. Good morning, Vanyaj. Yes, what's your name and where you at? This is Robert from Uganda. Yes, Robert in Uganda. Now the government has started sharing the ones focusing on our land. Mm. <laughs> We are surprised. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you for the call up. On 752-912-912 and 780-912-910. Those are the two numbers that you can be able to reach us out. And let's get to hear from you. The Big said. Hello. Chris FM, good morning. I'm Jebari Program. 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 Hmm. We are going to go to the Rokana in Deva. Avantawa Kavi and Bafunavia, Bokumun to Abu in a shop and Juanch Kuyamba. Hm. A Konga Tangum Taria who had been a shop, Yokuetima. Government can be Daku Vitora Vyod. Unka to Mania who got to corruption name is Ranz and then your Bagam and the Bansovera. Goroza, Goroza, Chokuma de uh, on seven five two nine one two nine one two one seven eight zero nine one two nine one zero. Let's get to hear from our callers. The big set. Oh, we just lost you on the on the big set. Hello. Yes. Good morning. Morning. Yes. What's your name and where you at? Jack from Katozo. Yes, Jack in Katozo. Uh, first of all, they have already taken our land in there. Hmm. That was uh, said, uh, it is a playground. Uh, if I'm to give you the details, it is in Arjembe. That was a word. That is a subdivision. But I still saw it. Well, the man came and took the whole land. Mm. You can imagine. Government land has been already taken. So now they are coming to our land. Uh, I don't know whether the people are awake or okay. people are still in slumber, but I thank you, Baka. Okay, thank you. Command that you guys to you. All right, I want to appreciate you very much. Now, perhaps uh, the, f the the whole fear is a bit about government taking on people's land, but the reverse is also true. There are people, individuals, that have taken over government land. So, uh, government, wh where is government going to cry out? Who is going to rescue government land? The problem is, under the land policy of 2013, there's no distinction between public land, government land. Mm. It's not there. So, so government is actually nowhere. And, but, and, but government um, is the custodian of public land. Yeah, you see, it is the, actually, it is a trustee mm. of, the, of the land, of the people of Uganda. But actually, it raises questions when government talks of idle land. 
Yet government itself is idle. Just nine, nine days ago, the, the government used my money as a taxpayer to, to fly out 82 people to the UN General Assembly. That is not true. It, it is true. The official number it is, is true. 10. That, Both that of is them, the official, but yes. there's the unofficial number. See, there are two parallel teams, two conflicting teams. And After what are they going to do? To tour the. What the uh, Deus did it is saying, it's true, Banyaji. And to my utter shock and dismay, the president appointed the vice president with her delegation. It was the official delegation. And up to now, I'm still wondering how the prime minister ended up in New York with another delegation. Okay, thank you. Let me bring in Paka. Mwine <laughs> <Yes>. Paka. <laughs> you must actually <laughs> fund to, to the pe people of Uganda. We know very well that uh, uh, Ugandans use land for collateral. They use land for burial sites. They use land for all commercial activities. And without land, it's basically very difficult to it survive. Now, if at all, government is going to take up land that belongs to individuals, if it follows the suggestion of Professor Nyeko, it would mean if I have been able to obtain a loan facility from a, a commercial bank and my security has been a land title or my land, then what happens? Because now banks or financial institutions based on the interest of a person on land to convey them any kind of resources. Now, if at all, it's not what is going to happen mm. with land being owned by the state. Mm. How will people be able to use whatever that is at their disposal to obtain resources for production? Thank you, West J. I think the whole idea is, is a quagmire as we can see. Because uh, I already noted in my first submission that the framers of this country picked out this system for Uganda. Now, for example, uh, like the loan system you're talking about, we use land as security. So that means people will take, actually even people will not be allowed to get loans from the bank, which will quash the economy. Because this time they will say the land that you're presenting as, as property actually belongs to the government so that's one uh, that, that that will be gone that will be out so for me i would want to say that uh if we i i, I want to dig into nyeko's uh, professor nyeko's nyeko's mind mm. if we visited him today and we told him to give out his whole land to government would he accept or if we if uh, he's coming from if you have from Choli, for public in public interest then why not he may not he may not the public. What amounts, what amounts the public? to the public? Yes. Uh, the public would mean, for example, if it's a military base and it's for the territorial protection of our country, Information. then why not? Information. Yes. Public interest. Banyaji, the mm. All those things that we are discussing right now, actually, the government has powers. When there is yes. a public interest, the constitution provides for government acquisition of that land and they compensate you. So that's why, for but for, government, for but please, once, please for, debate it uh, 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 for in context. Once, if government is saying there are projects that we want to carry out in particular places, yes. but we are <laughs> who's stopping them? Are because uh, uh, that, who's you stopping let them? Let me give an example. Let's, 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 let's allow I think people. let me give an example. There is a story which has been running when government was building that Kampala MPG Express mm. that they reached a certain place and the road was supposed to go through a certain tree. Mm. And that the family heads said you cannot cut out, cut out our tree because it has our demons, it has our things. So if you cut it, you should give us 500 millions. Mm. And me, I'm saying, doesn't government have capacity to provide that 500 million to the people? Hey, I Peter think it Baca. was capacity to do if it. If the finance because, minister yes, does the kind of proposals, yes. how much are we stealing no, 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 on a daily? There has how to much, be value for there, there yes. How much money. are we stealing and, on a daily? And more to that, no, how much I'll are give we? No, 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 no. But the analogy, what what Peter Mpaka is saying is absolute madness for government for government to compensate a person because they think, and you see that is wrong. information for opposition political so you, parties to no, think no. because there is wastage of government of public resources 
government should not be able to scrutinize expenditure at any bit banyaji no wait let me say something let's allow peter yes was my flaw yes the us did it council has already said that the prime minister and the vice president took a delegation of 82 people to the UN. Yes, but two wrongs Inst- don't make a right. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Instead of taking... Let's allow him. him. Let's allow him. Me, I'm saying, we are always complaining that our people are, are poor. We want our people to grow economically. So if there is need for compensating for that project to be in place why don't we compensate them why don't we sit down negotiate with them maybe like you're bringing in the issue of value or of evaluating the value do it and give these people what is required of that land rather than coming and you use the constitution use certain clauses in the constitution and then you just take away the land without compensating these people. Government has not been able to take up any piece of land in the boundaries of this country. But, but this is what this by is what coercion of I owners. Think what we are I think means. I think that one we should know, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, 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 Supplement uh, uh, on what you're saying, uh, Banyaji. Mm. I will give examples. We still remember vividly when Bujaga Dam was being constructed. We had a similar, a, a more or less a similar, a similar scenario, mm. and these cultural people were engaged. And they gave in and they were compensated. I worked on the road project of Mukono Kayungabu Yukwenjeru, that ring road. Someone tried to pray hardball for more compensation money just opposite Mukono Tax Park. The president intervened. And more to that, the way uh, Council Deus did it, said it. Some of these people, uh, they connive with these guys, tell them, pray hard, board, we compensate you more. Yes. But everything is provided for in the constitution. That's the reason as to why there isn't any government project in the boundaries of Uganda as a sovereign state that has failed to be implemented because of a Ugandan that has refused or rejected compensation. And as I earlier submitted, these guys in the system, when they know that 10 years from now, 15 years from now, there is, say, a, a, an international airport that is going to be constructed in Hoima, the way Kabari International Airport is be, they go, they acquire land at a cheaper price from the original land roads. Yes. Now they connive with these guys in different government MDAs to inflate the value of their properties and the government ends up losing money. These are things that need to be addressed other than trying to use Ugandans as a scapegoat so that we lose the little that we have. Let government first fix their own mess, then they maybe okay. make that proposal okay. when we all Ugandans have faith, absolute faith in our systems. Yeah, yes, Councilor Boyd. Well, in the case which was decided, I think, uh, on Thursday, the, the Francis Zake case, the Constitutional Court, uh, Samin stated, and I want to, to quote the, the, the words of the Honorable Justice Muria Gonja. She, she said that the, the Speaker of Parliament gave caution to the wind. In other words, she was r- r- reckless and careless. Now, I want to advise the on the professor Nyeko not to be careless. Actually, his statements uh, are are inciting violence. Actually, he should even be arrested for inciting violence. And he actually brings into question the role of the Uganda Land Commission. And uh, it is even better that it should be disbanded because what is it doing? It, it even has what issues with the management and administration of the same. Um, but even that institution should be investigated from all the way from Baguma Isoke exactly. to Nyaki Siki here yes, yes, to, yes. to now Nyaki Professor Siki. Yes. So, so I think there are fundamental issues which have to be dealt with. And so if a professor comes up with such a statement, I think he should make some research and know that there are officers of government who own lands and are actually big chunks of land. They're actually, idle land, land here so in Kazo, in 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 in, in Chiruhura here. Mm. People have hectares and hectares of idle land. Okay, so so uh, he should not be hoodwinked by the officers of government mm. who form the mafia into thinking that that the government 
uh, has to cancel the the freehold land titles because the 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 substance of what he's saying is that all titles or in a freehold or certificates of customer ownership have to be uh, revoked and at what cost so i invite the people of uganda to stand up for for their rights and fight for what they own and then, and that is their land in in concert with what he's saying i would also want to put it on record that maybe professor is throwing a stone in the bush to see what will come out because as we talk of now even mafia. even even maybe it's the mafias using him because even the attorney general himself was asked the same thing and he never gave any comment he never said we are taking it up we are taking it to parliament or what and what but for me what i would want the, the listener to know is that the land or land whatever small land you have that is the only <coughs> permanent so property that you own that is li- that is yours that you can say that i have so for me i don't even think that government of uganda can really take this up even if they bring it up it will face the greatest resistance and this whole idea will be dropped and shelved Let's pick up more of the calls on oh, on seven five two nine one two nine one two one seven eight zero nine one two nine one zero. Call us right now and let's get to hear from you on Twitter. Alan Bachinians is saying it's a very good idea, uh, but too much corruption in this country will find investors and rich people sharing a, a very big portion of the citizens and poor people respectively. And uh, yes, Murundi Jordan on Twitter is saying that could work, but not under this government. We have been having land grabbing piloted by government officials. Now, government owners, ownership of the land would be like serving them the warm flavored milk that they want. <laughs> but Richard yes, you're saying, I think that will work. You at Mary Hill High School. Uh, Agaba Jordan on Twitter, you tuned in from Nyakayojo. Thank you. Ian Mpuirebuhanga, corruption, corruption in Uganda, it will not work. Sankara. Uh, Al Dettons, you're saying the so-called powerful government officials have been grabbing land relentlessly. So what will happen when government is given all those powers? Uh, you're at Metropolitan International University. Mwesuga Brian, you're saying I don't support that idea because land has helped individuals in one way or the other. Colin on 752-912-912-1780-912-910. Let's get to hear from you. One seven five two nine one two nine one two and seven eight zero nine one two nine one zero on the big set. Hello. Yes. Good morning. I'm okay. And I am well. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine. I'm going in the Yes. Thank you so much for listening, again. All right. Let's stop for a break. When we come back. On that final lap of the show, don't touch your radio because so much is still on your way. I'll get back to your feedback messages and give you an opportunity to call in once again on 752-912-912 and 780-912-910. You'll be able to watch on Cruise TV whatever is happening here. Good morning. It's bold. It's real politics. The Big Seat on 91.2 Cruise FM. Great music. Great music. Great friends. Great friends.
Cruise FM. Great music. Great music. Great friends. Great friends. Twenty-eight minutes past ten o'clock on Western Uganda's biggest radio station, ninety-one point two Cruise FM. Great music. Great friends. Good morning. My name is Wes Gabanyaji. Now, if I told you you're listening to the radio for the very first time, the Cru- uh, Cruise FM or is is on 912 Cruise FM on Twitter and 91.2 Cruise FM on Facebook. Cruise TV is where you can be able to catch the television where you get to see whatever happens here on Plot 12 Multilane Studios. Uh, my name is Wesley Gavanyaji. The conversation this morning has been on the proposal by the chairperson of the Uganda Land Commission, Professor Nyeko Modi, on government taking over ownership of all land in the country, especially idle land now what is in there to solve is where government wants to carry out particular projects on land but it cannot because but individuals that own this land either cannot accept the adequate compensation by government in accordance to article 26 of the constitution or they simply do not want the projects to come up and they frustrate them this move is geared to make sure there is efficiency in service delivery and the taxpayers money is given value for it. With me in studio is Council when they just did it, uh, Mr. Simu Evangizi and Mr. Peter Mpaka. On, uh, you can be able to call in on 752-912-912 and 780-912-910. Let's look at what we think should be the best alternative, where individuals can still get the benefit of ownership of land, but projects of government still can go on seamlessly without any limitations by the people of Uganda. Council Buenz. Yeah, I I want to reiterate that um, land is the only thing that you can own. And and what the professor is saying is I think is is not thought about. I think he's acting on on impulse. He does not know the consequences of a, a, a citizen not having land. People are going to become violent, you see, and and you see, land is is almost the only thing that you can own. Because even if they 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 court and uncourt steal it, it stays there. You can recover it in courts of law. So uh, I, I I want to to be very uh, specific and categorical, and warn the the land professor <laughs> that he should not dance to the tunes of the mafia. Uh, uh, their intentions are not in good faith. They are actually against the 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 common good, which is uh, pronounced under Article Eight A of the Constitution. And let's um, not for, forget that on the 29th of October 2015, the the, the Supreme Court of of the land has stated that um, Section Seven of of the Land Acquisition Act was unconstitutional. Now, that section allows government to take land without first compensating you. And that is the case of the Uganda National Roads Authority versus Irumba Asman. I think it's constitutional appeal number two of 2014. So, what the government is trying to, to do is to bring back the same unconstitutional Se- uh, s- uh, section of the law by amending the constitution, which of course should be contrary to Article 92 of the constitution. So I want to warn the the the, the people of Uganda, especially those in government, that the words of the professor are not I- are not in the interests of the of the people of Uganda, and he should I think read the preamble of the constitution that recording the history of our country which has been plagued by war uh, and and instability land if you go to courts of law m- are around 95 percent of cases have their basis in land so land the cases of land are a major cause of case backlog so he, he is trying to uh to kind of uh Ignite the scenario where where there's violence in Uganda, especially between the private people and the officers of government. 
and uh, as we head into the elections i don't want the the uh, the president of uganda to, to use it as a card to to mobilize resources okay of course in terms of social capital and so forth he should also be aware that uh, without land a, co- a common person is at the mercy of government and the, the bill of rights which is in our constitution springs right back from the magna carta of 12 of 12 of 15 which actually enshrined in 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 uh, article 5 there of the protection of private property so private property especially land must be at the core of any democratic institution and the fact that to are trying to aspire to achieve a full democratic state uh issues of expropriation eminent domain in the interest of public health pu- public defense public morality public order must be exercised only in exceptional s- uh, circumstances and not as a general rule so i am I am against the proposed amendment of the of the constitution because it it is not in the interests of the people of Uganda and the country at large. All right, thank you so much Councilor Wenze. Uh Peter Mpaka, way forward we want a two way win-win situation for both governments and private land owners. For me I would think that government of of NRM should try to be as transparent as possible fight the mafias and uh, if you have a project you want to implement that is for public good let it be evaluated transparently without people hearing that there are people hiding behind others trying to steal somebody's land then secondly i would want uh, that land is who we are <coughs> even in in the, in the national anthem it is there even on the coat of arms it is there it is one of the characteristic symbol of of a country of uh, a nation we can even go back to 1978 79 mm. when amin was uh, put out of power because mm. of a matter of land yes. invading their kagera yeah, yeah, yeah. wanting uh, to annex it to uganda yes exactly mm. so that, that's what i was going to say that a government is even charged with protecting the territorial integrity of 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 a country or of a nation as it as it is and in doing that you're also charged with protecting persons and their property which one of which is land like council has said that we have so many cases in court and all of them or most of them have a hinge on 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 land so for me i would say let's become a transparent society let's fight corruption let's not target a group because for me i still feel that Buganda is being targeted in this because when you try to follow even debates that were there in 2017, 2018, 2020 the issue was always Kabaka and now you have his friend Mabili is coming out again suing the Kabaka over Busulu so i don't know why government is uncomfortable with this small money that Buganda under their Mairo tenwa system are collecting maybe from people who are there i think the president is right when he says do not evict people let's let's always find a way which is uganda is doing finding a way of making sure that uganda is not a problem it's not it's not a problem it's not a problem actually their milo tenwa system contributes about less than 10% i think it's 9% mm. of the whole land mass in the country so let's not hide these so called professor nyekos and try to fight or trying to target a certain grouping of people we are all uganda we are one people that's why i always rephrase or talk about the phrase of 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 the fdc mm. one people one uganda all right thank you uh asimo banjisi on the element of how government can continue to provide service delivery to the people of uganda and still respect the law in terms of ownership to land by private individuals in this country thank you banyaji you see sometimes i'm brutally honest and i know even today when i live here some people in nrm will call to ask if i'm still in nrm 
I'm NRM, but I'm pro people, and I'm a Ugandan first. Being a Ugandan is above being NRM. This concerns us all as Ugandans. And honestly speaking, when it comes to the framers of the grand norm, our 1995 constitution as amended, it's one of the best globally. And when it comes to the issues of land, if you interest yourself in the preamble of that very beautiful document, no one should tamper with our current land systems. They are functional in the interest of Ugandans. They are functional in the interest of government. Because all of us here agree there isn't any government project that has failed to take off because of resistance by the citizens of Uganda. Foreigners, investors, all of them come here, they get land on this basis. Actually, interesting, Rebanyaji, if you did a research, a small one here in Imbara, even refugees, Uganda is the only country where a refugee would buy a plot of land and put up a structure. That's why we are the U.S. of Africa. So I don't mm. want us to to be made to believe. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> want us to be made to believe. What I'm saying is true. Open we open are the open. biggest open hosting country of refugees. If you look at the number of, of nationalities in Uganda, moving freedom, mushrooming, so I mean what I'm saying. That's why the uh, Uganda is more attractive to them. So I think Professor is being misguided and he needs to do research. I know most of those people in academia are good at research. They have several research assistants. But I would agree with you, Banyaji, the way you said the Rand Commission itself needs to be investigated because there is a road that desires to be done there are very many unanswered questions they are using my land as an excuse actually when you look at the busuru that people pay who are occupying buganda land it's the cheapest money that you will ever pay in regards to renting or using someone's land actually buganda is doing us a favor because they are hosting multitudes of ugandans and foreigners on their land but and by, by, by their <coughs> proponents that say <coughs> it's still against the majority of ugandans because they got it out of an injustice uh, a historical but, injustice but, but, yeah. but, yeah, gee, Let's uh, not uh, the whites came here no, and no, appropriated no, no. land and Uganda gave them free land. Actually, Uganda they never yes. gave them free land actually they, they lost some land under that arrangement if you interest yourself in the history of this country and we all know that it's a propaganda that is being used. And actually in Uganda, Uganda is among the most hospitable, very receiving people. Because even when you look at their Ruchiko, their parliament, the parliament of Uganda, they even have Indians in it. People from other ethnic backgrounds. They have no problem with it. So let's not use them as an excuse. It, right. Because it's a very small fraction of the, uh, Uganda's land. When you go to the north, when you go to the east, we had a quarter here from Bukedia. You had his testimony. Mm. And these are true stories. Vanyaji, I've told you every district that you go to, you will find people complaining that government land has been parceled out to individuals. All right. Which individuals, the majority of them, are well connected to government or uh, uh, actually government officials. We shall not mention names here, but we know some ministers okay, that have you. been implicated. So, our land tenure systems, Mairo, uh, Rizhold, Customary, uh, and the freehold, they are very okay. Okay, and yes, it's and one of the reasons as to why our economy is performing. Banyaji, if you tamper with them right now, it will crush our economy. Okay, mm. yeah. and I also have a small message here from Simile Godwin. He says that the riches of our people in Nyakayojo or in Imbara or in Uganda at, land, at large is land. So if the land is taken away. That will make our people even more All right. When we come back, it will be to close up the show, but slightly into the second topic of the show after these uh, messages. Good morning. It's tough. It's bold. It's real politics. The Big Seat 
on 91.2 Cruise FM. Great music. Great music. Great friends. Great friends. The Big Seat on 91.2 Cruise FM. Great music. Great music. Great friends. Great friends. 15 minutes to 11 o'clock on Western Uganda's biggest radio station, 91.2 Cruise FM. Great music. Great friends. The conversation that we've had is about land, and we think we should engage a second gear. President, while addressing the NRM caucus, called on the Minister of Finance to come up with a statutory instrument that would regulate the percentage of interest that money launders, call them sharks, charge uh, the people of Uganda, especially the vulnerable groups that borrow from these individuals. Council of Wenge, uh, these individuals that have uh, micro-financial institutions have actually been, gotten, uh, been given uh, the mandate to trade under license, licenses issued by the central bank. The president calling on to cap the interest upon which they can charge their customers isn't it in violation of basic economic tenants? Uh, okay, no. Uh, because actually the president should be asking the minister of finance, why haven't you made a statutory instrument to specify the maximum interest rate payable? Because under, under Section 5 and 90 of the Tier 4 Microfinance Institutions and Money Lenders Act of 2016, now, there's no maximum interest rate. So the, the, the duty to specify maximum interest rate is, is, it is given to the Minister of Finance by, I mean, uh, I mean when he or she makes a statutory instrument now because of of that vacuum now lenders and of course i want to specify that it is only a company which can lend money as a business mm. so it is illegal for for a person to lend money at an interest in the process of making of 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 lending money as a business to lend money it is illegal and even if you were to sue a data you don't have any remedy in court if you do not have a money lenders license. license. So, mm. so it means you must be a company. You must be a company licensed by the Uganda Microfinance Regulatory Authority to lend money. P perhaps so, now a listener would want to know. Yes. In however, equitably, if uh, at all you and I consent it doesn't over mean a contractual agreement yes it to does borrow not, money yes and how money. then would it be justice that now, courts are supposed to now. perpetrate if at all that money cannot be gotten back to the person that uh, yes gave it? yes because nothing arises out of an illegality so so uh, the the law as it is it, it does not stop a friendly a law a, a friendly loan mm. agreement mm. you and i can Agree. can have a transaction but we must be careful uh, that uh, okay the the law actually doesn't even stop us from including interest in the transaction absolutely not. what it bars is is to include interest 
as a way of you see so so the the lender must not be engaged in the business of lending money it, if it she or he is not a company mm. so i think the president is is in order he should prevail over his means of finance to to issue a statutory instrument but if at all it is a matter of exploitation council no. wenje there are so many Before sectors of our economy that need let regulation me, let me, I mean, if it is exploitation if, if, if no 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 get mm. it if at all it is exploitation that the president wants to cap then how about going in all other different sectors where is the salary wage the minimum wage if at all it is about a matter of welfare of ugandans you see there, there is so much exploitation uh, the, everywhere it, uh, the, Interest is defined as the cost of borrowing money, mm. and there's no country which can survive when uh, when people don't lend and borrow. Absolutely. So so uh, uh, where the problem is is that uh, the interest rates which are being charged by circles and banks are unconscionable, unfair. They are even above the central bank lending rate but the president did not talk about those that tier one uh, institutions that lend to individuals mm. like commercial banks mm. he's talking about loan sharks now now you see a loan shark i don't know if it also includes a company but uh, now you see before 2016 mm. the maximum interest rate was 12 you no know, it was 24 percent per year Mm, per now that that is two percent per month mm. but when that money lenders act was repealed they did, did not uh specify the maximum interest rate so there's still a, a vagueness in the law mm. now that vagueness has been harnessed and exploited by people who think that they are sharp and they charge 30 percent interest rate 40 percent uh, but also we should not forget that people are not forced to take the, the uh, to okay, kind of uh, go and lend or borrow they come when they are willing yes yes but of course the the fact that that they are not forced it doesn't mean that they should be uh exploited, exploited. All right, thank they you. deserve a fair and just and cautionable interest rate so i think uh, the the president has not been aware of what is happening in his own country he, he has not been aware because right, since 2016 you. this v vagueness has been there so i think he's waking up late all right he's waking uh, up late peter and parker and yet he's the biggest <laughs> consumer of, of intelligence so why is he coming up seven days i mean seven years later <laughs> Where has he been? Government, government, especially President Museveni, every financial year go to multinational corporations, the World Bank, and and the money lenders. We saw they had literally borrowed from a Nairobi individual just yesterday. Where does he get the audacity to put limits and caps on people that are trying to trade around this economy? Yet government borrows in itself with huge interests. <laughs> from them even government bolos from them yes. so i think there must be some money lenders who are in his neck and he's looking for how to <laughs> cab <laughs> them for me nyendagamba ko muntu wabulijo ko muntu wabulijo wesije i will not go so elite like yeah. my friend council who is quoting very complicated clauses in the constitution here mwenu bantu mwa baturikirize money lenda weno wo kura izina ryo mu runyankore ni kafuna no bawazo woha owa kafuna so for him his target is to see that he squeezes you and gets yes for him owa when i nangu akuye hebyawe so yes no 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 that is that is it for me let's let's allow him let's allow him ndagamba ndagamba from my own testimonies uh, and from people i've heard yes. and experienced yes. where somebody borrows them to aron shanju mm. at the garkayo abamujangu ba mubanza million 10 at the atre million 10 na zanyu zinaze abamujangu eriye itakeru atire actually uka signing ngo wa tuguza so tukarutwara over somebody who borrowed 7000 a matter of sufficiency now, and now, adequacy that there. is a different thing mm. a sale transaction mm. no actually it is a loan 
transaction this guy is does a sell transaction mm. that is fraud that's fraud yes but, but that's what they do no no fraud no that's no, that's that is not the general rule that's, 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 that's what they do exception but but let's let's allow okay thank you what peter mpaka is saying all of us and our dear listeners it's the bitter truth vanyaji we know the majority of ugandans are not aware of their rights mm. are not aware of the provisions of these statutory but, but and the law this is something very basic that yeah, I, w- I, I, I want you very uh, land uh, people to help I'm, me understand I'm building you, 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 you are a borrower uh, uh, let me build you go, you, 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 go, you go to my friend Bright Muhumusa that, that we all know yeah. trades that <laughs> yes, <laughs> and, yes, and yes. you say you, <laughs> you, go, you, you borrow from yes, him yes. right yes. yeah uh, and uh, you write an agreement and yes. you are trying you to consent. Consent. yes and and, and you even have banyaji and you even have a guarantee we, we, we are trying to help There's our people wrong there. and we are trying to shed more light on that yes so that they stop being duped mm. and me at times my brutality mm. when it comes to critiquing objectively has costed me opportunities multiple opportunities the president is as late as yesterday and this thing is overdue and that's why i'm bitter with this systematic corruption embedded in our systems don't think that the line minister does not know that he has to come up with a statutory instrument in regards to this honestly speaking it's quite unfair for someone to charge 10 15 20 30 interest percent per month mm. And to make matters but, worse, but, but there are institutions Vanyaji, that offer Vanyaji, less interest. Why don't you go to those? Vanyaji, that's what I was coming to. That's what I was coming to. Yeah, yeah, let's let's not let's not let's not let's not behave. Yeah. Let's okay. behave and be civil. Oh, but it's 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 what I was coming to, there is a vacuum in our financial institutions. There is a vacuum when you look at the red tapes of borrowing. I, for one, have been borrowing since uh, 2010 when I finished university. Mm. Not every Ugandan has correct security. Not every Ugandan has a stable uh, 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 cash flow. Because these financial institutions will give you money basing on your ca- cash flows bankings. When you look at our current tax regime, when you people who n- are no longer interested in borrowing are running away, shying away from banking money. Because when you bank money, today if I sell land and that money is deposited on my account, it, 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 it will be caveated and I cannot access my money. I have to first write oh, to okay. the manager that is explain. So as I conclude, mm. let the minister do it. This thing will protect both the lender and the borrower. Okay, thank you. And it's Banyaji. not contested anywhere. Uh, thank you. And finally, Banyaji, there are genuine money lenders mm. and there are also these sharks who are people who are after people's property. They lend you money, it force you to make a sale purchase wrong, agreement wrong, yeah. because okay, someone wrong. is under duress, our, our they want fast. money for school fees, fast. this and that. And they end up for, for, falling for the bait. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 all right. Thank, thank you, Asuma Banjizu. Thank you, Peter Mpaka. Thank you, Council Wenge. Just did it. The Bishop Stewart University Faculty of Law, we are having our sports uh, gala today. I hope everyone is out there at the faculty trying to have a good time as we socialize and have uh, what we do as uh, the learning students of law. Uh, my punchline this week is... Uh, if at all you want to regulate money lenders, regulate every sector that has an element of exploitation. My name is Wes Gebanyaji. Let's meet next Saturday on the big set. We have news at the top of the hour. May God bless you. We are out of here. Views expressed on this program are not necessarily the views of this radio station or its management. This radio is regulated by Uganda Communications Commission, UCC. Yeah.